What is up, guys? It's Rich back with another Gray Zone Warfare video for you today. We're going to be talking about some of the graphic settings that I've been using on the latest update. Um, this I've been having an opportunity to test this for the last few days um, for Gray Zone Warfare, the nighttime update. I've you know been tweaking some of these things here and there, trying to see what gives me the best performance without compromising too much of the quality. Um, and I've definitely done some testing. I've done some performance testing. I've seen some things be better than the other. Obviously, each system is going to be different, so definitely recommend going through this and tweaking it to your own standard, but maybe using this as a good reference point. And definitely let me know down below in the comments some of the settings you might recommend or some of the settings you might be using. And if you're having any issues or anything like that, let me know down below in the comments, and I will do my best, or somebody from the community will obviously try and come along and help you out to the best of their ability. I'll go over through some of the settings and describe why I'm using them in that certain mode, and then hopefully it can help you out and make it clear enough for you. If this video helped you out, guys, make sure you drop a like on the video. If not, a dislike would be completely understandable. Um, we're going to go through the monitor. So number one, monitor, make sure it's on your default monitor. So obviously, wherever you're playing on, if it's on your, make sure it's on the screen in front of you, essentially. Window mode, you could use windowed full screen or full screen. I haven't noticed too much of a performance loss with it in this game. The reason I'm using windowed full screen right now is because I tend to alt tab a lot, uh, excuse me, a lot when I am streaming or recording or doing other things. I like to alt tab in and out of the game a lot. And with windowed full screen, it makes it a lot easier. And it feels like the game doesn't hitch as much when I'm using windowed full screen. However, definitely try full screen out if maybe you're using a one monitor setup or if you don't alt tab out as much as i do display resolution make sure it's set to your native resolution of your display vertical fov this is all personal preference i use 69 um this gives me a nice area of i can see what's going on around me and it still lets me focus on the enemy in front of me without compromising too much v-sync off that affects input latency so we don't want that brightness set to 100 contrast set to 100 saturation set to 100 and gamma set to 100 i will say that I actually have some of these things tweaked in the NVIDIA control panel. And I'll actually put that on screen now so you can see that. You can pause the video here if you'd like to. The reason I changed some of those on there instead of my in-game graphic settings is because I do feel like sometimes that might affect performance. And if I'm just using through NVIDIA control panel, I'm just affecting the way it looks on the monitor and not necessarily in each game um, setting. So I tend to leave those as default. And the way I'm using that is in NVIDIA control panel. And that's the, uh, the settings I have there are set specifically. So you can definitely copy those or try those out and maybe tweak some of those to your liking. The one thing I'll notice, though, is with this update, especially in nighttime with using NVGs, you definitely want to have your gamma turned down, whether it's in-game settings or the NVIDIA control panel. Having your gamma down lets you see a cleaner picture, especially when you're using those nods. Um, it's going to just turn out to be a better picture for you. So definitely recommend turning down your gamma a little bit so you can get a better, clearer sight through those NVGs. Frame, li frame rate limit, excuse me, set to 180. I never reach this anyways, so it's fine. I keep it capped at 180. Background FPS, you could limit this if you want, but that's been set the default for me custom quality presets uh 3d resolution that's i can't change that because i use nvidia dlss global illumination i use that as low shadow quality low i use these two as low for shadow quality i think sometimes it's easier to see players when shadows are lower um less of a distraction especially with all the foliage that's going on around lower shadows means easier to spot enemies is the way i've seen it texture resolution i set that on high um one thing i want to know is what the texture resolution i was trying to figure out there's a way to like raise my resolution of my character um because as you can see here it looks a little uh, i'm not sure like the bottom pants look fine but maybe the top like headset something about something that looks jaggedy on it and i can't figure exactly what it is i've tried changing some of the settings in and out and see maybe if that affects it i haven't noticed anything maybe one of you guys maybe let me know down below in the comments if there's a setting that i can recommend changing for that effects quality set that to low um, i did turn that up to medium and turned that up to high but it does reduce performance to quite a little bit so i decided to just put that back down to low i didn't notice enough of visual fidelity difference with that on reflections and foliage obviously low and low these two are going to affect your performance a decent amount um, especially with the game with this much um foliage definitely letting it pop in in the background if you have it set to low, it's going to, you know, have a less of a range on that LOD pop in with the foliage. And definitely with a game, like I said, that has this much foliage, you want to have that on low for the best performance settings. Shading quality, have that set to medium. Post-processing set to low. Sharpening here is zero because, again, we use NVIDIA DLSS sharpening. Colorblind mode off. Obviously, that's an accessibility setting, so use that on if you need to. Anti-aliasing upscaling method. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, they definitely recommend, if you have a 40 series, if I'm not mistaken, um, and a 30 series, I definitely recommend trying DLSS. Anti-aliasing quality, have that set to medium. You can change that. If I believe you click off and you, you can change it, then click on to DLSS. I'm not sure if it 100% affects it, but I do have it set to medium. Uh, NVIDIA DLSS frame gen on. I know a lot of people talk about the input latency that this adds into multiplayer games. For me personally, two things. Number one, the benefit you get from it in FPS is too much of a good trade-off. Number two, the input latency I see on it is almost minimal. I don't really even feel any of them, to be completely honest with you. Now, however, I could play with it off, and I'm sure it might feel a little bit more responsive, but the 
benefit of having those extra frames might just go ahead and contradict that same exact um, loss you get with the input latency. NVIDIA DLSS Super Resolution Quality. Now, again, you can change this out if, you know, specifically to your, your rig, if you're feeling like you need a little bit more performance, you can go to something more like balanced or you can switch it to something more like performance. I feel comfortable having it a quality, makes the game look good, and it gives me a good, nice balance with my frames and performance in the game. I want to notice as well, I want to tell you that from my experience testing it, over the last two to three days, the performance has definitely been better from the original wipe. This per, this update, excuse me, for nighttime ops has been great for performance in my opinion. I've had over 130, 100 FPS in the starter town, which before you would know I was probably getting around 80 to 90 FPS. So that's like a 30 to 40 FPS bump that you're getting just from this update. Um, however, I'm sure it might be different from each system, but that's from my own personal experience in testing. Reflex latency on plus boost, obviously want to maximize that. Uh, and all of these are left off quality. These aren't really affected much because I'm not using Fidelity FX. So that's obviously NVIDIA DLSS. Now, if you were using a different setting up there, you could change those. GPU crash debugging, you can turn that on. This will collect data if your game crashes, so you can send it to the devs. I know sometimes they recommend having that on because they're trying to correct, collect excuse me, as much information as possible. I'll go through my game settings here. Show health and stance on. Show compass on. Show FPS counter on. That's the little FPS counter on top right. Show notifications on. This can um, You can actually turn this off if you want to toggle the HUD notifications, um, which is nice. Sometimes it can get a little distracting if you're in a big PvP fight. Show private message notifications either on or off. Allow invite the squad on. And then th these default audio settings right here that you'll see here, the reason I don't really touch these that much is because I use an actual mixer and an amp outside of it. So I actually use software to affect my audio and change up the way it sounds, whether it be for stream or for my own personal benefit. Um, I actually don't touch the audio in game too much. So if we go over to controls, we'll actually have aim now has a toggle option. I know a lot of people have been waiting that for a while, so that's nice to see that they've added that in. Um, some nice other features that they've brought in with the game. So obviously the settings changes and stuff like that, but definitely have these customized. I'll scroll through it. You can pause it if you want to copy my binds. I tie I tend to try and change them maybe sometimes here and there and see you know what might be better overall for me affecting my pvp and maybe make me a better player but obviously these are all specific and preferential so definitely rock these if you want to if not change some of the other you want to definitely leave it up to you because keybinds is just tied down to each person individually so i'm not going to say you have to run these in order to be the best player that's what i play with and that's what helps me out the most all right, guys, I'm not going to keep you here much longer. That about sums up everything I want to cover in this video because Grey Zone Warfare Night Ops is releasing today or tomorrow, depending on when you're watching this video. And these are the best settings you want to have rocking for the new update. Definitely recommend it. It's a blast. I've been having a lot of fun with it, and I can't wait to see you guys in there. Let me know down below in the comments if you guys are super excited for this update. I can't wait to see you guys in there. Make sure you guys stop by the live stream. I'll be live streaming a lot during this new update and during this wipe time. I am super excited to cover the game for you guys. And if you always enjoy some Grey Zone Warfare content considering something to the channel. Other than that, guys, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.